Welcome back one more time to the RISC-V assembly language. This time we'll talk about nested procedures and register conventions that support them. Remember how we do a function call in RISC-V. The main program places arguments in known locations, uh, uh, registers say not to A7, and does a, a jump and link. In that process, saves the return address in x1 and then transfers control to the function by jumping to its location. Then the function will have to save those registers that have some value um, that the, the main relies on well, by putting them on a stack. Then the function will do its own thing, will put the return value in A0 and A1, and will return those registers, restore the registers from the stack, and then we'll do the return back to the main. Now what happens if there is another function, say function 2, that this function that has been called by the main uh, needs to call. So there is basically a nested function. The main calls a function 1 and function 1 needs to call function 2. What will happen here is that we have only one place where we can put the return address, where we know how to wh where to put the return address, which is the register x1. That's the one that holds the return address. So it will be holding the return address from the main when we go to the function 1. When function 1 calls function 2, it will clobber that value and functional will not know where to go back. Similar holds for the argument registers. So what, 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 what are we going to do? Well, let's take a look at that. If this was not clear, let's look a little bit more into an example. Um, so here is a function sum square that works on integers x and y and it in turn calls another function mult of x and then adds a y to that. Um, so if something calls some square, you know, some, some program, maybe yet another function, something called some square and now some square calls mult. So there is a value in RA that some square wants to jump back to to be able to return, but this will be overwritten by, the, by the, that call to uh, mult. So what are we going to do? Well, <laughs> we have a standard solution, right? We shall use stack. Actually, you know, there is a straightforward way of doing things. Um, we take all the registers, all 31 of them, and we just put them on stack every time there is a nested call. But that is inefficient. We will rarely be using all 31 registers and memory operations are expensive. They take time. And sometimes we may get away without at all um, having to put, some, put things on a stack. We may be able to reuse local reg register for something. So, let's take a look at what we actually do. We rely on putting some of the registers on the stack during a nested call and having some of them being um, clobbered. In order to understand how this works, we have, we have to um, always understand the relationship between the nested functions. So the one that calls the function will call a caller. The one, the function that is being called will call callee. So caller, one, once again, caller is the calling function. Callee is the function that is being called. So when a callee returns from ex executing, the caller needs to know which registers have been clobbered and which ones are guaranteed to be safe to, to store the value that was there before the function call. So the register convention essentially splits the registers into these, the ones that are saved and then the other ones that are volatile or uh, called temporary. So every time there is a JAL, we need to split the registers into these, into these two groups. And that is done by convention in RISC-V. 
So let's take a look at um, what is happening in these conventions. And again, this is happening in order to reduce the number of unnecessary um, writes to the memory. As, um, I'll try, it tries to optimize some, op some average number of registers that need to go to the stack. Assuming that sometimes all of them will have to go to the stack, or many of them will have to go to the stack, sometimes none or almost none. So there are two categories of registers. Those that are preserved across function calls. And caller can rely on these values being unchanged. So the function, the caller function, the calls, the callee, doesn't have to worry about those. Whatever is left in the, those registers stays that way. So the things that are automatically saved, you guessed one of them is clearly the stack pointer. The stack pointer is, is the one that is preserved across because of the mechanism how the stack works. There are a few other pointers that we are not going to touch here. There is a global pointer, and a thread pointer, and a frame pointer. Those are generally uh, touched by the, uh, by the compiler and the operating system. And then there are saved registers. There are, is a dozen registers, S0 to S11, that are saved, whose values we should not be, that, that are going to be untouched. So they're not going to be scribbled over. And if we need to use them, like we did in the, in the previous example of a function call, well, the callee will need to restore their value. And then there is the second set of registers that are not preserved across function calls. So the caller cannot rely on these staying the same. We'll call those volatile or temporary registers. So we already know that the return address and the argument return registers A0 to A7 are not going to be preserved. They will need to go to a stack across the nested calls. And there are also so-called temporary registers, T0 to T T6. If there is something that the caller has that does not want to be overwritten in the temporary registers, the caller will need to save them before calling a function. Got that? So, here is a summary of um, you know, which uh, registers are uh, saved and which ones are temporary. Um, they have their numbers that hardware um, understands, and then they have something that is called the application binary interface. These are their symbolic names. These are human-friendly symbolic names in assembly code. That's how you can call them uh, by in assembly. And then here are their um, descriptions. Um, some of these are familiar and you have seen. Uh, the other ones that you haven't seen, you probably don't need to get into a deep, you know, deep into detail with them. But the important thing is here, who is the one that needs to save the contents of that register if there is a nested call? So, um, well, nobody needs to save x0. Return address needs to be saved by the caller. Stack pointer is saved by the callee. Taken care of. Um, we don't care about these. And then the temporary registers, if there is something in the temporary registers that the caller would like to have saved during the, during the function call, the caller needs to save them. So the caller will need to put them in the locations where they are going to be pre preserved. Stack or, uh, or uh, uh, the, the, the saved registers. And then if after a function call, the, the callee wants to use or needs to use the save registers, they need to save those values and restore them. Because the basic logic here is 
caller assumes that the values that are going to be in the saved registers are not going to be touched. If they have something that matters to them in the temporary registers, in like a scratch space, they better take care of that and put it somewhere where they can restore it from after the function call. And that is basically it. We are going to take a look a little bit more of the, the operation of memory after this break. <laughs>